All right, guys. So here we are with our first uh, lesson from distance learning. So get over the fact that it's weird, right? I got a beard. It is what it is. I'm writing on the side of a filing cabinet with whiteboard paper. Uh, you know, we're doing the best we can. Okay, so we're going to talk about 9.1 this week. The first part, uh, the first video that we have is going to be talking about examples one and two. Uh, there is a ton of stuff in this uh, section. This section used to be like a whole chapter in the old book, and now it's in one section. And really, this is the most important, uh, the most important thing that you're going to learn here in the next seven, eight weeks, if I'm completely honest with you. Um, this is something that we use in geometry all the time that you're going to use in algebra two. You're going to, you're going to use this stuff a lot moving forward. So that's why I'm making the video instead of just having you read through the book or, or whatever, because sometimes we'll just do that. So we're going to talk about it. Feel free to pause whenever you need to pause, uh, write stuff down. Okay. Take notes. That's going to be uh, the best thing for you is to, to take those notes, make sure that you understand it. Okay. And as always, feel free to email um, message with any, um, any questions that you have and I can clarify for you or visit the office hours on Friday. We can talk about it then too. So here we go. We are talking about what's called simplest radical form. Okay. Simplest radical form right here and simplest radical form. We talked about radicals before. Uh, the radical is just a square root sign. Right, so we are talking about square roots here, uh, and we've talked about square roots before in terms of just finding the square root of something, right? Typing into the calculator or just knowing it if it's a perfect square. We are going to find a way to simplify our radicals without typing it into a calculator, okay? And this is a little weird, right? But if we take, let's say, the square root of eight, if we take the square root of eight. That's not a perfect square, right? If I take the square root of eight, I type it into the calculator, I'm not gonna get a whole number. Uh, I'm gonna get a decimal. I'm gonna get a really long decimal. In fact, that decimal is never gonna end. It's never gonna repeat, okay? It's just gonna go on and on and on forever and ever, just like pi, right? On and on forever and ever, doesn't repeat, doesn't end. Uh, so it's not very exact, right? It's always a rounded answer if you type that into the calculator and you get, you get an answer. It's rounded. Even if you write it out all the nine, decimal points that your calculator gives you. That's still a rounded answer and we don't want that. This is a way to give us exact answers, exact numbers, which is what we want moving forward. So instead of just typing that into the calculator, we are going to do something else. We're going to put that in what we call uh, simplest radical form. Okay. Now, a couple things about simplest radical form and you see them listed here. Uh, something is in simplest radical form if there's no perfect square factors inside. And that's what we're going to concentrate on a lot here is this perfect square factors. That's how we're going to simplify stuff. And you see the perfect squares off to the side. Um, so we're going to deal with that part a lot. Other things, though, that you got to be careful of. No fractions inside. So you can't have the square root of one-fourth or one-half or whatever. Okay, You can't have a fraction on the inside. And you can't have a radical in the denominator. Uh, we're going to talk about this one a lot. Uh, in the next video, for example, four, um, but you can't have that in the denominator. So we're going to concentrate really on on the first two here. This one's example one. This one is example two. That's what we're going to deal with. Uh, so if you haven't yet, make sure you got those perfect square uh, perfect squares down. That's very important. You need to know your perfect squares. Uh, and remember, perfect square is we take the square root of it. It gives us a whole number. So we really need to have that. So let's talk about putting stuff in simplest radical form. Okay, simplest radical form. Let's take that square root of 8 that I mentioned. Okay, so the, the first thing for simplest radical form said you cannot have perfect square factors involved. Remember, factors are what times what will give you this number. So there's only a couple things, right? 1 times 8, 2 times 4 are going to give you 8 when you multiply them together. We need to find a perfect square factor for that. And we want the biggest perfect square factor that's out there, okay? The biggest perfect square factor that uh, is a factor of eight is gonna be four, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that eight, we're gonna break it into the square root of four times the square root of two. So we're gonna take that biggest perfect square factor and that's gonna be one of the two things. Now we can break it into this and that's completely okay. 
All right, we can take eight and we can change it into something times something else. So the square root of eight is the square root of four times the square root of two. Because four times two is eight, we can break it up like this. You can only do that with multiplication. Okay, you can't do it with addition. I can't do square root of four plus square root of four. That doesn't work. Okay, it's only multiplication. So we break it into here. Now, what I can, whatever I can take the square root of, so that perfect square, I can take the square root of it, take the square root. Okay, so the, the square root of four is two. Okay, there's no square root over it anymore because I took the square root. I took the square root of four, which is two. Now, if you can't take the square root, I can't take the square root of two. That's not a perfect square. So that's just going to stay under uh, the square root sign, under the radical. So I am done here with this problem. This is simplest radical form. My answer is two times the square root of two. And how we say that, how we say it, is we say it two root two. That keeps us from having to say two times the square root of two. We just say it's two root two. So you're gonna hear me refer to answers like that. Two root two, two root three, four root five, right? Whatever it is, um, that's just the way that we say that, okay? So let's look at another one here. Let's look at uh, the square root of, uh, let's say, 20. Okay, square root of 20, very similar. We gotta think of that perfect square factor, the perfect square factor that we have. We know this is four times five, right? So I'm gonna break that into four times five, square root of four times square root of five. I can take the square root of four, which is two. I cannot take the square root of five, so that's gonna stay square root of five. And that's my answer, two root five. Okay, so take the square root of what you can, whatever you can't take the square root of, stays underneath that radical. This is simplest radical form, guys. Okay, this is what we're trying to get to. Uh, now, sometimes uh, we're gonna see problems that are a little bit harder, okay? A little bit bigger. Let's say we've got the square root of 80. Okay, square root of 80. Now, you look through those perfect squares, and maybe you don't know which one is the biggest perfect square factor. Maybe you don't know. And that's what we're trying for is the biggest one, right? Just find any perfect square factor of 80. Any perfect square that goes in evenly. And right now, the number four should jump out at you. You should know that four goes into 80. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna break that into the square root of four times the square root of 20, because four times 20 is 80, right? I can take the square root of four, that's two, but I have 20. You gotta look at that, that radical now. That square root of 20, that 20 still has a perfect square. It still has a perfect square factor. That 20, right, I can break into 4 times 5. We already talked about that. So now instead of 2 times the square root of 20, I have 2 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. That 2, notice, is still out there. It's still out front. I'm just simplifying this root 20. So now I've got the square root of 4, which we know is 2. Can't do anything with the root 5. I still have that other 2 there, though. So you're going to multiply those two things together. This is going to end up being 4 root 5. Okay, so 4 root 5 is going to be our simplest radical form. It took me a couple steps to get there, right? I took out the 4, took the square root of it, made it a 2. Then I had to do the same thing with the 20. Break it into 4 and 5, get the 2, multiply them together. Okay, so 4 root 5 for that. If you need to, pause it, look at it again. Make sure you understand it, right? Now, because I had to do it twice, that means I didn't get the biggest perfect square factor the first time. So instead, let's think about what is a bigger perfect square factor that goes into 80. And you may know, you may not. Um, but we said four works. Does nine go into 80? No. 16, 16 goes into 80. Whether you realize it or not, 16 times five is 80. So that what that means is I can go straight into root 16 times root five and take the square root of 16 is four, that gets me right down to four root five right away. Okay, so the biggest perfect square factor possible is gonna get you that answer quicker than if you don't have the biggest one. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. Let's look at, uh, let's look at variables now. Okay, because we gotta be able to do this with variables too. So let's say that, well, first of all, we know the square root of x squared, the square root of x squared is x. Right? Those two things cancel each other out. It's just x. When we take the square root of a variable, anytime it's an even number, anytime that exponent is an even number, all we have to do is cut it in half. 
Okay, cut it in half. This, the square root of x to the fourth is x squared. The square root of x to the sixth is x to the third. We're cutting that exponent exactly in half. Okay, it's not, uh, it's not taking the square root of that number. Okay, it's cutting it exactly in half. Because remember, this is saying what times itself is going to give me what's underneath. What times itself is going to give me x to the sixth? x to the third times x to the third gives me x to the sixth. So we just cut it in half. We have x to the tenth square root of, that gives me x to the fifth, right? So uh, pretty easy when they're even. If they're odd, we got to break it up. So let's say that we have uh, square root of x to the third. Square root of x to the third, we're going to break that into something with an even exponent. Okay, so all we're going to do, if that's odd, if that's odd, all we're going to do is we're going to take one away. Okay, so x to the third, I'm going to make that x squared times x. I'm taking one x and then I'm making that even. So subtract one from that odd number. Subtract one, that gets me here. And then that extra one's here. Now I can take the square root of x squared. Right, square root of x squared is x. So x root x would be my answer. Okay, let's look at it again. Let's look at uh, square root of x to the seventh. Square root of x to the seventh, I can break that into x to the sixth. So I subtract one from it which leaves me with another root x there. All right, I take the square root here, that gives me x to the third root x. Okay, so that's variables. Okay, that allows us to take the simplest radical form for variables under that square root sign. So let's put it together. Okay, let's put it together. Let's look at, oh, let's say, let's jump right into it. Square root of 75 n to the fifth. Okay, 75 n to the fifth. So take each part separately, break it up, just like we did when it was separate. 75, perfect square factor, is 25. So that 75 is going to be 25 times 3. N to the fifth, remember we said it's odd, so we take one away, and then we just have an N there as well. So this is all broken into all those uh, factors, two of them perfect squares, two of them not. So take the square root of what you can. I can take the square root of 25. I can take the square root of n to the fourth, which is n squared. Anything that you can't take the square root of, that's not a perfect square factor, or not a perfect square, that stays under the square root sign. So that would be my simplified answer. Okay. So that is uh, simplest radical form. Okay. You're going to want to try it. Um, definitely look through the book, all of that. That's example one. Let's talk about example two real quick. Example two is when they're when they are fractions okay when there are fractions let's say there's a fraction inside of the radical what we can do just what we did and, and we, we split up that uh, the last one into what times what we can do the same thing with division here we can make this the square root of three over the square root of four okay so take that fraction just split it up top and bottom square root on both of them and then simplify what you can. I can't take the square root of 3, but I can take the square root of 4. So that is going to be the square root of 3 over 2. That's going to give me that answer. Okay, that is simplified. Okay, remember we said for a simplified answer, simplest radical form, you cannot have a square root in the denominator. We don't. And you can't have a fraction under the square root. We don't. So that would be our answer. Okay, now for example two and all the stuff that you're doing uh, in this first first assignment, it's always going to work out nice. Okay, it's always going to work out for you where you take the square root of the bottom and it's going to give you a number. Uh, what happens when that doesn't work out? Let's say we have the square root of five on the bottom. That's what example four. That's the next video. Okay, um, so don't worry about that. You might though. You might have to simplify first. Let's say that we have. Oh, let's say we have the square root of uh, 50 over 8. Let's say we have that. Well, let's simplify that fraction first. If we simplify that fraction first, divide top and bottom by 2, that gives us the square root of 25 over 4. Well, now I can break that into 25 over 4, which is 5 over 2. So simplify it first. If, if you don't think, if that's not a perfect square down there, then simplify the fraction, and then try it. Okay, so that's examples one and two. Uh, again, very important, the simplest radical form idea, and we're going to keep working on it.
throughout this chapter uh, or throughout this lesson specifically. Um, rewind, look at it again, okay? Make sure that you understand what's going on here for these first couple examples.